Hello, I'm Deborah, and I'm going to show you how to do some knitting, some very basic knitting, uh, which you don't need much more than basic knitting, to be honest. I'm going to show you how to cast on, do some knitting, which is a type of stitch, even though it's called knitting, but knitting is a specific stitch, and purling, which is the, another stitch. Both of those two are really helpful. And how to cast off so that all of your wool doesn't unravel at the end so that all of your piece does not all come apart. I've got a few things here to kind of introduce you to the basics. I've got some uh, what we're calling yarns today we often call them wool but wool is a very specific uh, yarn made from animal um, wool whereas um, some of it is acrylic which these are actually they look like wool but they're acrylic and so they've got plastics in them so you might use them for different reasons. The main reason I'm using acrylic here today is because I do a lot of um, yarn bombing or gorilla knitting as it's known where I might attach some of my knitting to some furniture outside, some street furniture. Um, and if I use wool it shrinks and if I use acrylic it doesn't. So you can throw it through the wash, you can get it outside and it doesn't change too much. Um, yeah, so that's that bit. Also here we have a range of needles. So this needle here, I don't think you'd be able to see this, but this is a 4.5 millimeters it says on the little blue handle. And these are made of, um, I'd say aluminium because they're very light. Um, and they make this kind of noise. They're very good to slide your stitches along. That's good. This one here is a four mil, so it's a bit smaller than this one. It's about and this, these here are a seven. That's a big stitch that I'm doing here on this purple one. And here you can see that I have been doing, this here is knitting on one side and purling on the other. So if you knit a, a row and then purl a row and knit a row and purl a row, I'll go you'll get this very smooth side on this side and a textured side on this side and that's how you get that flat kind of look. If you do knit a row, purl a row, no knit, 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 if you just knit every row you get this section down here and if you knit and purl you get that section up there so knitting on the top and purling underneath. Yeah, so you'll get that, but I'll show you how to do that. We're only going to do small pieces like this today, which are 10 stitches across. And we're going to count how many rows we do so that we can keep an eye on what's what and see how many it takes to do what size of what and what we're doing on different ones. And I've got a little piece of paper here. So when I do a row, I'm going to write, put a little mark as one. So we can keep an eye on what we're doing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these needles, mainly because they're the ones that are available. I'm sending you, in the packs, you should have fives, which is slightly bigger than this one. But that's good because it means that you work fast and bigger. So you haven't got to be too tight. You can be quite um, easy going with it as a starting point. What we do first is we take our yarn and we put a little slip knot in it. And we want a slip knot in it so that it moves. I'm going to move these things out of the background so that you can see a little bit clearer. Well, hopefully, anyway. So to make a slip knot, I go over my two fingers and throw the wool, the yarn, through that little round circle I've made and pull it, but not too tight, because you want this to be able to still move. Because you're going to put both your knitting needles into this hoop. And then you're going to pull it a little bit tight so that this tension, there's a lot about tension in, um, well there's a lot about tension in life, but for knitting it's very important as well, is that we keep our tension kind of as consistent as possible. So if we've got loose tension, keep it loose and if it's tight, but what you'll see over a piece of knitting, even on these pieces of knitting here is where, this was where I've made a purposeful hole, honest. Uh, but you can kind of tell where the tension changes a little bit, but as you do it, the more practice you have, the better you get at uh, consistent 
tension and it'll make more sense to you. you don't worry about it too much right now so we're going to we've put our one needle into the slip knot and now we're going to put the second one in and it goes behind behind the needle but through the stitch there I'll show you from that angle as well to that stitch now this little tail here we need to keep that out of the way so I'm just going to hold on to it as I do hold on to the needles here and kind of keep a keep myself aware that that is where it is we don't need it it's going to get cut off eventually but we're not going to do that until we've we've got into it or come to the end in case we need it to attach it to something else so now in this hand we're holding the yarn that is attached to the ball of wool so we've got this hand holding the wool and this hand holding the needle this hand is always going to hold the needle and this is the the way that we always work you might be left-handed I'm right-handed so my dominant hand is my right hand so I'll always hold it in here but if you are left-handed you'll do it in reverse and I am going to look at a way of maybe turning this film around so that that can happen but can't promise anything so with this hand we're going to take the yarn behind that back needle in between the two needles it's an anti clockwise direction through the stitch here not through the stitch in between the two needles and then you're going to use this this the needle that's in your right hand to pull that that piece of yarn that you've just put through those two needles together and then we're going to place this on top of here on top of this needle so now we have two stitches that's casting on this is casting on and we're going to do it again so we're going to go through that stitch so that it is in between so both of those needles are in that stitch but one of your needles sits behind the other hold on to that tail again and take the yarn around the needles in between the two pull it out and attach that one to there and then gently with this hand pull that a bit tight because that's so that it's sitting nicely on there not so that it's really baggy like this and not so that it's so tight that it won't move I always like to pull it out because we've also now got to get the needle in the back through it here through to the back take your yarn and over the needle pull that yarn out that you've just put in Oh, I've got a bit tight there, it's because it's pulled on another piece of yarn from another stitch. That's very bad behaviour of me, look, I've left a little bit of, I've cut that. Right, so, but we're only practising, we're only playing, so let's have a go. Over, and anti-clockwise, pull this up pop it onto that needle put your, your needle in the stitch again take the yarn around pull that stitch out go and then through again take the yarn around your needle pull this needle through it shouldn't be that tough like it's looking it's because I'm catching little bits of this stitches from the previous ones I've cast on there so I've got one two three four five six seven I want ten in total so one two three four five six seven put my needle into that last stitch again seven oh. eight is gonna come now through this bit here we're going to pop that on there. Let's go this way a little bit. Nine. And last stitch this should be for the casting on is ten. Now you can cast on many, many, many. And your patterns, if you ever use one, will be telling you how many to cast on and what size needle and what size wool to use because wool also comes in different plies. I think this is two ply. So 
I think it was three ply, four ply, one, chunky. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten stitches on there and they're cast on. 